a lesson two on cylinders. So we've been learning about form, 3D form. And we talked about the illusion of the 3D is in this curve. Okay, so you need your ellipse to show the perspective that you're choosing, whether it is from the top at eye level or from bird's eye view. Okay, most of the time you're gonna be showing bird's eye view because objects are sitting down on a table and you're looking down at them. Um, with shading, which is what we're gonna learn in this video, uh, you're reinforcing how the light hits an object. Now sometimes in a picture you have the light hitting from a side, um, and so you have a shadow cast on one side of an object and a highlight on the other. Now, oftentimes, um, the, the light is just more ambient, uh, coming from all areas. And so when we want to show form, when there's not a real direct source of light, we can make this the source of light in the center. And then as the walls of the object, curved object, go away from us, the sh shading gets darker. A lot of times, if the light is coming from the front, it'll catch the top lip and cast a shadow. Other times, that shadow will be because there's something in it. Okay? When you're doing an object like a coffee mug, remember that the handle is a cylinder too. The object is a cylinder. A lot of times when we start out drawing coffee mugs, we want to put the coffee mug coming from the very, or the handle coming from the very edge. But remember that the coffee mug is attached to the wall of the coffee. The handle is attached to the wall of the coffee mug. And so if you put it in just a little bit, that's going to increase that illusion of 3D. Okay. Local color, again, when you're adding colored pencils, is the color of the object. So the whole, whole object is purple. Here I've got a cone included in with my cylinders because when we draw the cone, we also use an ellipse. Um, the shading can be similar as well. Don't be afraid to put details in. Details help tell the story of your picture. Um, if you have words on your cylinder, whether it's a Pepsi can or a Coke can or cat food or a coffee mug, <laughs> it says, would say, I love cats. You see how we know, or we can assume, that it says, I love cats, even though that last letter isn't in there. Don't feel like you are forced to get all of your information on because you're, you're telling a part of a story and our brains can fill in the gaps, we know. Um, but as you add words to your cylindrical object, they need to curve to go around the object or it will end up flattening it back out. So things to think about as you're shading your cylinder. Again, we're going to start with our ellipse, the outside edge, the lines come down, and a parallel, that curve to show your depth. Here's where it's closer to us, here's where it's further away, closer to us, further away. And then you have to decide some things about your object before you get started. Okay, I always go from the outside edge. and start my value scale that we learned. Getting lighter as I go towards the center. You're going to need to touch up your edges, blend those a little bit. A lot of times you get a little bit more shadow at the bottom. Okay, so now it's gone from looking fairly flat to like it has a little bit of form. The shadow is giving it form. It's coming towards me here. Remember, be patient with yourself. If you haven't done a value scale in a while, practice your value scale before you do this. You know, practice, practice this, this pushing hard and then moving it a little bit at a time and getting lighter and lighter and lighter and practice it for the control that you're looking for because you want to be able to, as you put your pencil down, you want to know how dark it's going to be. If you have a dark line and then it gets light, remember we learned how to go back, persistence, and fill in that rich medium, even if we have to darken and fix other things, 
it's worth being able to do this and have it gradually change and knowing how to control that. That's a major skill. Once you have this beginner skill with your, your basic drawing mastered, then it makes it possible for you to do all of these things, okay? So that's worth practicing. And don't be frustrated if you, if you have forgotten. Okay, so we're gonna come in, get lighter as we get towards the center. Do a little bit more at the bottom. A little bit to straighten out the top. Then I have to kind of decide what's going on with my center. Uh, is it a cat food can where you can see the rings on the top of it? Is it going to be an open object where there's uh, liquid or something in it? You know, all kinds of stuff. If you want to draw an object where you're seeing all the way down, you just have to make a, a, a wider ellipse. Okay, so the wider your ellipse is, then when you're looking down at it and you recreate that ellipse for the bottom one, then that gives you what's inside. <clears throat> I'm going to look at this as just an empty object. You'll notice that's my darkest dark that I've put down yet. Okay, because I want to show that the object is open and it's shadowed inside there. As the walls come up and they get more of that ambient light, Okay, and there I have my cylinder.